Is it worth vlogging about the Philippines? Um, I was watching Jeff Lee's video this morning relating to people making an income. There is one thing I want to say, which, well, the first thing I want to say is there's two types of income here. There's one that you need to live in the Philippines, and the other one, which is where a lot of the vlogging comes from, is for those little extra things in life. Uh, for example, I've got enough in my channel to buy a motorbike. Um, yeah, how much would my... My motorbike costs 113,000 pesos, so I could put it on monthly instalments, I suppose. This is just an example. Um, but a lot of the vlogging on the Philippines is not on the Philippines within the expat community. I'll explain why. Most expats have a view like this. What they're doing is they're doing it for retirees and the expat. Expat is somebody who's looking for information on cost of living. You look for information on things like how to process visas. Looking for information on how to find a romantic partner. So it's very, very specific. Um, as such, a lot of the stuff gets regurgitated. And this is why I want to separate this from travel vlogging, um, travel vlogs, because travel vlogs are very different. But at the same time, this is a niche that somebody really should tap into. I'm not in the Philippines, so if I was, I would be doing it myself. I can't understand why Peter, whatever his name, I, can, I always get his Vendavir or whatever. I uh, apologise if I get his name wrong. But I don't know, he travels around a lot, but where's the videos about the locations? Um, but anyway, what you've got to look at is when you're, um, say, in Cebu, most expats, I would say, uh, I don't know the numbers off the top of my head, but there's a huge amount of expat population that start off in Cebu. They either head into Cebu or head into Manila, Angels, that sort of area. So you've got these, what I call the two hubs, where people eventually go out and branch out into the other parts, like CDO, etc., where they meet other expats and move around a bit more. But there isn't a lot of information about Cebu itself. Um, a lot of this stuff is too touristy and polished and just not that good. Um, but there is scope to do it because a lot of it is done for the Philippine market, you see. Because the Philippines does this huge thing on internal tourism, but doesn't really promote itself overseas very well. So there's a market there to go, what to do in Cebu? This is just an example. So I'm coming to Cebu for a week. Um, what can I see? I could do the Skywalk. So you could video the Skywalk. I could do the Basilica, Magellan's Cross, uh, Lapa Lapa Monument. I could do the Fort San Pedro. I could do the beaches of Mobile. I could do the whale watching. I could do the um, Sea Walk at Mactan. There's loads of stuff there that isn't being covered by expats and it's not being covered by a lot of Filipinos either. Because they might do the one item but not the others. But when you're building a channel that's actually generating a regular income, it's worth reinvesting it. Because you'll actually find that doing these things has a bigger scope. Um, what you find... Instead of just having expats and Philippine uh, expats and retirees, see what the the seawalk and skywalk. Who who uses it? Filipinos, Koreans, Japanese. Um, pretty much the tourism industry, the waterfront hotel and its events there. What, much broader spectrum of people. Why is this relevant? Well, there's a big key element here that people don't really talk about. It's about the niche value. Expats, retirees, are normally in this with a limited budget. Budget's probably maxing out for the average expat at $2,000. And I'm saying maxing. And I'm not saying all expats are this, because some expats live a lot more. I mean, I spend a lot more than 2000 a month. But the whole point here is the average person in that niche has that fixed budget. 
But when you go tourism, you've got people flying, you've got the hotels, life insurance, medical insurance, um, hotel bookings, the other tourist attractions. There's a whole niche there which pays more money. So I don't actually do my videos on the Philippines for money. Um, it does make money, but I don't do it for money. I do it because when I first went to the Philippines, the information was crap. Um, that's, that's the polite way of putting it. It was unreliable. It was out of date. Um, a lot of the ebooks and that were around then. I found were absolutely useless. Um, mentioning ebooks, I've actually downloaded most of the ones that are on Amazon onto my Kindle. I actually bought them all. Why? Um, you know when you click through my Amazon links and I get a little bit of commission. You've actually bought most of the Philippines books on here. And I'm reading them all because I'm sorting the, the good from the bad. Um, I might actually do reviews on those to save some people some money, but also promote the good ones. Um, but the whole point is, don't just assume the niche is so narrow. Um, another example. My wife's relatives, we've got one professional basketball player. A lot of the basketball games I've gone to don't have any media coverage. There's no radio there. There's no television. There's a lot of people there. But I'll tell you now, there's a market for people to watch that stuff because they watch the basketball. And as soon as they know you're recording it and whatever, you will get a Filipino following. And the Filipino following will be much bigger than a lot of the expat stuff. I'll tell you that now because 100 million people and I would say 30% of them have nothing better to do all day. You will get a lot of people follow your channel if it's based on sports, if you're doing boxing, if you're doing kickboxing, martial arts, going to all the local events related to sports. You will find that you'll gain a following, but then you'll start to pick up the local media guys that actually take an interest in you as well. And then you do the, oh, I love sports bit, and then you find that your channel grows again. So there is a lot of opportunity there. And this is why I want to say that if you're just looking at the narrow viewpoint of this is the bread chips I brought today, and they cost me 200 pesos, um, video blogging type stuff that's a very narrow window but if you're saying we're going to the skywalk today we're going to jump off the building blah 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 that sort of stuff has a broader audience um so i would say you could actually earn more money by thinking out of the box because the average expat is looking at where they're going to live and they stay there they don't really travel around too much they're content with where they are a lot of them are on limited budgets and as such don't really move around a lot. Here in Spain, I haven't moved around as much as I would have liked. The kids sort of make that very difficult for me because um, like going to Casada, they first we get there, they don't want to walk anywhere. Then they want the toilet, then they want food, then they're bored and want to go home. I needed about three hours filming time in there, which I didn't get. So... For me, it's quite difficult, but a lot of expats have motorbikes. A lot of expats have an entire island, if nothing more, to explore. So the opportunities are there, and I would say that what a lot of people need to do is stop looking at the way a lot of people are doing the same thing over and over again and look at what's not there. For example, if there is a weeping shrine of mary somewhere these random things do appear um, a friend of mine actually has one from cebu and it's on youtube that video it has over a million views just on that statue um, there is a lot of stuff around that you're not aware of there's a lot of stuff that you would be interested in the people in the same room as you know where it all is but they don't tell you You've got to prize it out of them almost with a crowbar because people just assume you know everything because they do. Um, like the sports events, the basketball. I didn't used to know about the basketball games. It's because I kept hounding people like, when's the next game? When's the next game? And then you're seeing, oh, where are you going? Oh, we're going to the back. Well, why didn't you tell me? I'm coming. And then you 
once they start knowing that you all keep going, um, they will take you along with them. Um, you need to put yourself out there a bit more. And it says, here I am in Spain, um, like this week, we've got four days off with the kids. Um, I'm just getting off over this flu thing, but ne probably on Monday, Tuesday, I'm going to change the antenna on the van, which will be another little video for the Volkswagen stuff. But there's another thing. What about vehicle repairs? Philippines has a stupid amount of motorbikes. If you're doing an underbone, for example, a Honda or whatever, guess what? Do a channel on that. That will get a lot of following. There is a lot of stuff that people just ain't looking at that's right in front of them. And it's those channels that will actually make more money. Um, the expat stuff, like I said, even Ned and um, Henry are probably maxing out at probably $600 off their channels. But I know Ned's got an ebook which he's selling on, and I know Henry sell advertise the Amazon stuff as well because you know I put Amazon stuff on my channel as well. But there's stuff going through his website as well, which will generate extra income. But it's not big money. You will find things like the motorbike parts because when people start advertising for your motorbike, you know you do motorbike spares and it's showing how to do an underbone and how to change this exhaust system for another one and all this sort of stuff people will follow it but also the motorbike park companies will quite happily spend money on google to sell those exhaust systems and you're probably thinking yeah but i don't want to change my exhaust you don't have to the local motorbike shop already has somebody that is having their exhaust changed just film it all right thanks for watching